so I feel compelled to make a video about research today because a couple of years ago I actually learned how to research and it changed my life dramatically and when I talk to, when I hear people uh, give their criticisms of the Bible and of Christianity their arguments kind of show that they don't really either they don't research or they don't know how to research whether it's uh, whether it's just only listening to biased bias sources and not listening to the other side, whether it's just uh, taking what people taking claims that people make and just kind of believing them without research, without actually researching. Um, I'm just here's a list of things that people do that sabotage their own research. All right, now the first thing that people do to sabotage their own research is exhibit arrogance. All right, now. I'm going to show you a clip from the video, a very popular video of a former pastor who said he left the church because he can no longer teach a lie. In the video, he gives his reasons. He makes pleas for his loved ones to still treat him with the same respect that they did when he was a pastor. And I agree with him. Um, but in a, it's a very brief video, and I'm not trying to critique his entire video, but something he said in a video is very relevant to the topic that I'm talking about now, and that has to do with arrogance, because you'll hear him say, look, I, you don't understand my beliefs, that you don't understand why I changed my mind, it's because you haven't learned what I learned, and people tend to have that attitude when uh, a lot of conscious people have that attitude where they assume that they uh they, they assume that these reasons for not believing the Bible that they have are somehow new or secret. And sometimes if you're talking to them online or something, they'll whip these things out, different things like the Council of Nicaea or horrors. They'll whip them out kind of like, like they're ninja stars or something. Like they really think that people don't know about these things. Not knowing that these things have been refuted and dealt with by Christians years ago. Some of them centuries ago. All right. So that is the first mistake people make, arrogance. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, I'm going to show you this clip from this man. This is the next pastor who left the church. He could no longer with a clear conscience be a Christian because of, a court, because of the things that he says he researched. Now, I'm not going to argue with his decision. I want to talk about his, I just want to comment on what he says about research. I believed in what I believed in the Bible, okay? I now know that without a shadow of a doubt, the Bible was manufactured for control. I understand this. You don't, and that's okay. So you have a right to be upset because you've never been told these things. I am a teacher. My job is to teach you things you don't already know. Now, what you have to understand is this. If I say something that is outside of your realm of knowledge, okay, look it up. Don't just get mad at me and tell me I'm wrong and tell me, well, I have personal experiences. You don't even know where I'm coming from. Well, I've done all the research you've done. No, you haven't. You may think you have, but until you sit down and have a real conversation with me, you will never know where I'm coming from. So when I tell you I believe in God, I do. But when I tell you I don't believe in the Bible or any character in the Bible, any, all of them are fake. All of them are manufactured. None of them ever existed historically. Now, understand where I'm coming from, because I'm trying to make this video short. So, in this video, when he's talking about research, one thing he says is, look, you can't judge me and tell me I didn't do good research if you never talked to me. And I would agree with him, for the most part, because... Uh, when I talk to people in the conscious community, they deal with me, they say the same things to me. You don't know what you're talking about. You just believe what you're told and you believe in white Jesus. It's like, you don't, how do you know what I believe? You haven't even talked to me. You haven't even asked me anything. You're just assuming. So on one hand, I, I understand what he's saying. However, he also, he quotes a critic of him or he quotes someone who, who challenged him when the person, he quotes the person as saying, well, I, I researched all the stuff that you have. And he's like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. And it's almost, he has this attitude kind of like, if you knew what I knew, you wouldn't be a Christian either. And that is arrogant. He's arrogantly 
Uh, see, this whole idea that secret knowledge and the conscious community are the only ones that uh, that know things. And it's crazy because most of the stuff, there, there's absolutely nothing new that I've heard from the conscious community that hasn't been dealt with by hundreds of other people, Christians. Like where they've made videos or made whole websites about those things. So like responding to them. There's nothing new. Like there's nothing new here. Some of the stuff they bring up have been refuted hundreds of years ago. And it's documented. So and that leads to something else that I'll show. Um, that, that leads to my next thing. So the first thing is arrogance. People are arrogant. They assume they know more than you. And they assume that they just... I don't know. They're on another level. A lot of times you hear, I'm on another level. You ain't ready. Things like that. So the first thing is arrogance. The second thing, the second mistake that people make when they do research is not listening to the other side. Well, it's two things kind of in together. And he's going to bring up something else in this video that is a perfect example. I'm not trying to pick on him, but being that I just listened to the video and there's a couple things he mentioned that fit exactly with what I want to talk about. So I'm going to go back to his video. And again, it's not a personal attack on him. It's just a good example. So now he's going to talk about historical, uh, basically making sure your beliefs are proven by history, right? Now, that is interesting that he says that because when he, he's going to bring up an example here and just listen to what he says here. But when I tell you I don't believe in the Bible or any character in the Bible, any, all of them are fake. All of them are manufactured. None of them ever existed historically. Now, understand where I'm coming from because I'm trying to make this video short. On one platform, you have literature, spiritual literature. This is where you get Jacob, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Jesus, Judah, okay, Daniel, Ruth, all these names, literature on a historical platform where you're looking to see if things actually existed, if the world truly was ended by water. These things never happened. So what we're reading in this book are not things that correspond with his story, okay? Historical evidence does not back the Bible. If what you believe in is not backed by historical evidence, you have been deceived. What I'm looking at is real things. Oh, Kevin, you're programmed. No, I no longer believe in talking snakes, dragons, unicorns. Yes, unicorns are in the Bible. I no longer believe in any of that stuff, okay? I believe in what I see, and what I see and what I have... All right, so first, just I just put in the Google search unicorns in the Bible mean because I've seen these before. And as you can see here, it's not a secret thing. Like, it's not a thing that people don't know about that the Bible says there's unicorns in it. Look at this. Some of these are hilarious. I mean, you know, look how many there are. Look how many memes there are about unicorns in the Bible. Right? So this goes to my point of people thinking that they're the only ones that have some kind of knowledge, like they learn something secret. Now, this right here goes into what I said about not listening to the other side, because this article right here, if it'll load. Now, this is why I say it's important to listen to the other side. There are so many Christian websites and articles that talk about dark unicorns in the Bible because people who read the Bible say, huh, there's unicorns in the Bible. Let's see what they say. So I'm not going to go through this whole website. You can because it's it, they give you a whole article, but I'm going to there's a particular thing in here I want you to see. So they talk about, yeah, the Bible talks about dinosaurs. They say this is what we think of when we think of unicorns. They say, no, this is fake. They give you evidence that the Bible does talk about unicorns. Here's a list of verses. Numbers 23, God brought them out of Egypt. He, ha he has it as if the, it were the strength of a unicorn, right? So he lists his, all of these verses where the Bible talks about unicorns. Oh no, right? So now it gives you a definition from an old dictionary right here, 1828 dictionary of a unicorn. 
and it says that a unicorn is an animal with one horn, the rhinoceros. It is often applied to the rhinoceros. So it, now it's these people are giving you a claim, right? They might even actually use it. To, I believe they actually use a scientific word in here somewhere, if I can remember. Uh, they break down the word unicorn, what it means or whatever. I'm trying to find. All right. So we're not going to I don't I'm looking for the scientific word. I don't see it. But they say that, well, unicorns are actually rhinos. What do you do? You can say that is stupid. They're retarded. Or you can say, oh, they gave an excuse. They gave it an answer. So I'm just going to believe them. No, you don't do either one. You go and you Google rhino with a, a, a unicorn rhino. And when you put that in, you come up with this word here. This is what I was looking for on the website. I saw it earlier. I don't know where it's at. And this is basically, if you read about this, this is prehistoricwildlife.com. So they talk about the Elasmotherium. And what this website says is that the, this ancient dinosaur aged uh, rhino had one horn and it was called a unicorn. All right. I don't know why I'm scrolling. We ain't reading all that. So look at the website. Why? You can just put in that word, a last smotherium. And you can see that there actually was something that used to be called a unicorn. So my whole point is, again, if you don't listen to the other side, you don't learn things like this. This doesn't automatically mean the Bible is true. However, what it does is it shows you that the other side does have arguments for these kind of things. And then you, you just read that research is more than just listening to a claim and deciding whether it's true or not. When they say things like in 1885, this happened, then you go and you look for history of 1885. Did this happen? You don't just believe it or disbelieve it because it fits what you believe already. You know what I mean? You go and you actually research it. So if you look at any scientific, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. If you look up, see, look, they, you have depictions of it. It's not a horse. It's not a horse with a, a horn. That leads me to another one. See now. Now. The unicorn thing shows that one, he didn't do thorough research. Two, he didn't listen to the other side to see if they had an argument that actually made sense. And as I just showed you very briefly, that there was something called, there was a type of rhino that used to be called a unicorn. Now, the unicorn thing leads me to something else. It is a problem that we have when we read, now, the Bible and uh, it basically, even like all of the, basically the stuff that's not from our culture or from our time period, they can have the same words that have different meanings, right? And meanings than what we use today, like um, unicorn. To us today, unicorn is a fake horse with a horn and he farts out rainbows or something like that. But in back in the day, the unicorn to people meant an actual animal or some kind of rhino. So the problem we can have is, and it is, I mean, it's kind of understandable. You read something, you read an ancient text, they mention something, and really the only choice you have is to understand it the way you understand it today. We do that with the word slavery. If you read the Bible, if you actually read it and you don't just flip to this verse and this verse, but you actually like read through it, you'll see that the, the, the term slave was actually used for all kind of different positions that really have nothing to do with getting beat and working in the field all day. So um, one problem we have is transporting, kind of transporting our worldview where it doesn't belong into a different culture or a different time. And in the case of the Bible, a different culture and a different time and imposing our definitions onto them as opposed to letting them speak for themselves. Again, it's a common thing because you, you some actually like you won't really know that you're making that mistake unless someone else knows it and brings it up. So who knows? We probably do that a lot.